1995 Kenworth uh, W900L. Uh, it's got a Caterpillar motor in it, 3406E. The uh, motor is also painted burgundy and white to match the truck. It's got an 18-speed transmission in it. Uh, the door handles are shaved. Uh, it's got an air suspension on the front that, uh, that was added. The theme of the truck is the same from the motor to the interior to the uh, side boxes all the way to the, to the trailer. We kept the theme the same. Uh, there's a Kenworth light that lights up red in the back of the bunk uh, that is glass. Uh, so we've just really tried to keep everything kind of the same and everything flowing. The trailer that we put with it, it's a 2016 utility uh, dry van. Uh, we bought that new and, uh, and stripped it down and painted it. Uh, so there's no graphics on the trailer, everything is painted. Uh, and then we did go with the spread axle just to give it that extra wow factor. We bought this truck four years ago and uh, we were just gonna sell it. We, we've also got a truck sales business that we do a little bit with and thought, oh, we'll just buy it and get it home and sell it. We got looking at it, we realized we have something special here. The frame was just phenomenal. We got looking it over and it wasn't perfect. Uh, there was some blue on the frame. Uh, the truck was kind of a pearl white. Uh, so we decided to keep it and, and so we stripped it out totally down. We went ground up restoration, which means we took the motor out, we took the tranny out, we took the cab off, the bunk off. Uh, we, we started replacing bushings. So everything is brand new from the ground up on the truck. Brought it down, had it sandblasted, uh, the frame sandblasted, and then started the theme. Uh, my son Ryan got it, involved in that with me and said, Dad, I think we need to do it this way, and kind of came up with a drawing. We went to the painters with it, and uh, living in Michigan, we did it over the winter time. So our biggest challenge, of course, was bringing the parts to the paint shop one by one to have them all painted and keep it out of the elements and everything else. So uh, timing was very critical. It took us about four months to do the truck over. The cost is very hard. I didn't put a total number on it because I don't think I really want to know. We are very pleased with the way it turned out. Uh, we used braided wire for, for the wiring of the truck. We got a new harness out of Seattle, Washington area. Uh, just to update that and, and to, to get it, get everything functioning the way the way we wanted it to work. When we started the, the teardown process, it was in October. Uh, we've got 38 other trucks in our fleet and I've got just a, a, a daytime, we don't have a nighttime shop hours. Uh, so my guys did a phenomenal job with it. They, they, in the process of keeping up the other 38 trucks, they had to do this one in the spare time. That's why it pretty much took us the four months because there, there may have been two, three weeks where they didn't, they didn't touch it. Uh, just because we had other projects that had to get done, uh, other trucks that had to, had to get back on the road. So it was off and on. Uh, as, as the push came closer to the first show that we wanted, then, then I had a guy on it pretty much solid for about three weeks. When it came to the layout of the truck, I told Ryan, I said, you can do whatever you want with it. I said, the one thing that can't change is it has to be burgundy and white because that's our fleet colors. So Ryan got out uh, pencil and paper basically and just started drawing what he thought would really look good on the truck. Of course, you look at a lot of other trucks that you've seen over the years. You, you try to get some ideas you don't want to copy, but you want to get some ideas. Uh, he then met with a painter uh, and we came up with a plan to, to first do the burgundy and then, and then lay the white and, and the black on top of the burgundy and to make sure the lines, the tricky part was because the trailer hadn't, hadn't been, wasn't built until probably February. The tricky part was getting everything to line up with the trailer to where it matched. Uh, so we got a hold of the trailer a, a painter and, and worked with him very closely. He kept him in, in touch with it, what the, the tractor painter was doing and uh, it, it came out very well. When it came to the interior, we, uh, we wanted to floor paint it the same theme, the same stripe as what is on the truck. The seats have got it, uh, the same design in it. I got a hold of an interior design guy that does a lot of these race boats and he does antique cars over. The, the leather I got, well, we all office furniture out of West Michigan and the, the, uh, the furniture people use a lot of leather out of the North Carolina area so I got a hold of a vendor down there so we got real leather in the truck which I think really adds, adds to it as well. What I really like about going to the shows is just talking to people and, and to hear their comments. Uh, what The biggest one I hear all the time is it's so clean. It's just very striking. The colors just pop. Uh, it's not overdone. You know, uh, but one we've never liked one overdone. We've always liked them just classy and we think we hit it with this one. Some of the custom parts that we have is it's got a 12 gauge bumper on the front. Uh, it also has a 12 gauge lift on it. Uh, we wanted one that went straight up, not one that flipped out. It also has 12 gauge air front suspension uh, that was added to the front of the truck. Uh, we have Lincoln Chrome exhaust on it. 
and also a Lincoln Chrome uh, visor that, uh, that we painted to match. Uh, the fenders on the tractor and trailer are from Badass uh, Fenders out of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we like the look that they had uh, and we think that fits the truck very well also. When it comes to the, the Lincoln Chrome exhaust, it is straight pipes. Uh, there's no baffles in it. It is a little louder, uh, especially when you drive it. And being an older truck, you know, they're not as soundproof as what the newer ones are. But I think that's all part of the fun of driving it. I'm 57 years old. Uh, I knew right away in high school that college was not for me. Uh, I've always had a love for trucks. Um, I come from a family that were farmers, uh, very hard workers. Uh, so there's a lot of heritage there, but I knew farming wasn't my thing. And I, I fell in love with trucks right after high school and basically started driving when I was 19 and uh, got my CDL. Back then it was a lot easier than it was today. And you could pretty much go anywhere you wanted. And uh, so I started doing that and, and I landed in a, uh, a furniture company in West Michigan. Uh, started running coast to coast with them. Did that for 14 years. In that 14 years, I was blessed and able to be able to be in the office dispatching. Uh, when a guy would go on vacation, I would come off the road and I would help for a couple of weeks. I think the longest I ever did in the office was like a year and a half. But uh, in that time frame, I got to realize, you know, trucking companies with big companies or trucks with big companies, there's always a liability. And, and I could see that the future was not gonna, they weren't gonna keep the highway fleet. So I, I, after 14 years, probably just shy of 2 million miles, I left and I went for, that was with a, tr a, a private fleet. All right, so everything is the same, right? I mean, so they, they do things just a little bit different. Uh, so I went with it to a carrier and I started, uh, I managed this fleet for two years. So I learned both sides. I learned what it takes to be on the owner operator side, the carrier side, along with, I think, the professionalism that comes from the, the business side of things. Uh, I started the trucking company in 2000. I, I went back to that same furniture manufacturer and said, you know what, if I start a company, would you, would you hire me? And they said, absolutely. So I, right away I had a good contract getting started. Uh, you know, it comes down to who you know, and, and that's been a blessing for me. We started out with three trucks, we now have 38, uh, 17 years later. I also do things just a little bit different. I don't, a lot of companies will go out and they'll buy five trucks and they'll look for five drivers. I do, it, I do it backwards. I find the driver I want, then I go out and I buy the truck for him. Uh, to me, that works because I can, I, can, I can put the right guy in the seat and, and if I do that, they're on time, they're professional, I can take my time. You know, when, we, when, when company owners have trucks sitting, we get nervous. And right away, we need a body to fill the seat, right? So if I keep that pace and I, keep, and I, I get the right guys in the seats, my job is very easy. When it comes for me for turnover, to put it in numbers, uh, I maybe have one a year leave, which is phenomenal in our industry. I treat them well. I treat them with respect because I've been there. I know what they, I know the life that they're living. I know the pressures that it puts on their families. Uh, I also take a lot of pride that if somebody has a ball game for their son, I'm going to get them home for their ball game. And so I work very closely uh, with my employees, with my drivers. Do I always do it right? No, I don't. And, but I do my best and I try to be as honest with them as what I can and treat them with the utmost respect. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm not a business owner, I'm a truck driver. That's what I am, that's what my core is, that's what I love. And it, sometimes it's very difficult for me to take off my owner hat and put on my, and my, my driver hat and, and, and make the decisions I have to make when it comes to discipline or that type of thing. My advice for someone that wants to drive to grow their fleet, you have to, you have to first find the driver. Uh, drivers now are exceptionally hard to find, uh, but the, the good ones are out there. The young ones are the ones that I'm excited about to try to find young ones to groom the way I want them, that I think they, they need to be in our industry, to, to prop up our industry. Our industry's got a bad reputation. And anything I can do when it comes to these shows, to the promotion of, of transportation, I'm gonna take advantage of that and try to help out any way I can. Back in 1980, uh, when I started driving, things were, were a lot different. Uh, the roads, of course, weren't near as busy, but the speed limits everywhere was also 55. I, you know, when I started, I'd go to California Team. Uh, back in the, running an 82 or an 84 Peterbilt cab over, I could not sleep. I basically, from Michigan to LA, it'd be about Las Vegas before I could actually get two or three hours sleep at a time. Otherwise, I'd lay in the back and I couldn't sleep. You know, you're bouncing around. The interstates were a little bit rougher back then. The trucks, of course, didn't ride as good. Air conditioners didn't always work, so you'd go through uh, uh, south of Las Vegas into California, 120 degrees and, and no air conditioning, you know, and, and you just sweat it out. 
And uh, we had a uh, running team is a different animal altogether. Um, I, I ran team with some very good guys. I ran team with guys that weren't quite so good. And so you learn uh, what guys like, what they don't like, what their habits are, how to adapt and how to, uh, how to get along. Because that's a long ride by the time you go to, we used to go to LA, then to Dallas, and then to Georgia, and then back to Michigan. And uh, we would do that all in about five and a half days. Living with another guy in close quarters is very difficult. Uh, you know, some guys, especially if you're, I was a non-smoker, if, if you get stuck with a guy that smoked, you know, there are, there's a difference between a clean smoker and a dirty smoker. So I was very fortunate to have guys that, that, that also appreciated the fact that I didn't. Uh, but there's also the, the bond, if you get with the right partner, the right driver, the bond is it's, it's, it's very nice to have to make a connection with a driver. I mean, the conversations at three in the morning when you can't sleep, you just sit up and you talk. You talk about family, you talk about faith, you talk about anything that is important to you and, and to them. And uh, uh, you, can, you can really get a close bond with another, with another driver doing that. One of the, one of the stories I, usually, I like to tell people is, being from Michigan, we're, we're pretty confident, maybe even a little cocky when it comes to driving on the snow. And uh, we used to run with about five or six trucks out of Michigan all the way to LA and back. And when the weather was bad on 80, we'd, we would drop down and we'd run over Flagstaff. And uh, we were running, uh, it was that night, uh, and you know, probably seven, eight o'clock at night, about five or six of us in a row. And it was maybe two, three inches of snow on the road. And we came up on a, on a line of trucks, probably about, about 10 or 15 trucks all in the right lane. So we all moved to the left and passed them at about 55. And nobody said a word until the last truck passed. All, all we heard on the, on the CB radio was, damn Yankees. So I, that was always kind of a funny story that I have. And you know, we're very confident in what we do when it comes to the snow. And uh, you know, down through Flagstaff, I'm, I'm assuming there's a lot of guys out of Florida, maybe, maybe Georgia, guys that aren't quite so familiar with the snow and comfortable with it. If uh, you're going to get into the trucking industry today, it's, it's a lot different than when I did. You have to get into it with a service-oriented game plan. So you can make a good living in driving. And, and the balance is the hard part between family and being gone. If you can strike that balance, um, you're going to do very well in this industry. Finding the right company is key. There's a lot of companies that don't care about drivers, and it's really a shame. Uh, but there's a lot of companies that do. So uh, my advice for a young man, once he has a CDL, uh, once you go through the tough two years, a lot of companies today, like two years minimum experience, once you have that under your belt, really focus on a, on a company that says, but also talk to the drivers to prove that they are concerned about their employees and that their employees come first. Because at the end of the day, I'm in my office. Once that truck leaves my yard, turns the corner, they're on their own. They are totally responsible for all their actions, for their delivery schedules, and, and their professionalism. So uh, the good jobs are there. If you're gonna start your own, that's a very tough industry to get into right now with all the new regulations and everything else that we're facing. Uh, if you, if you, you have to know, you have to have a contact. If you can go with, into a shipper, and if they guarantee you, they'll, they'll load you. I do very little with brokers. Everything I have is customer related, but I thrive on that. That is the one thing I get joy out of this, is being the customer driven company that we are, uh, is I want that face to face connection. I want that telephone call. If there's a problem, I want to hear from the guy that, that cares why there's a problem. I want to know exactly what's going on, because then I can fix it. Uh, the problem with brokers today is they don't care. Once you're on the load, they could care less of what happens to you, as long as you keep in touch with them and everything else. But as far as uh, how you're treated, they don't care. Um, and that's a shame. So my advice would be to, to make connections with shippers uh, directly. And, and you're going you're gonna to enjoy your life much, much better. One of the regulations we're facing now is e-logs. Everybody knows that they're coming in December of this year. Uh, we have got ours ordered. I've got a game plan. Uh, we've tested out several different models. Um, the system we we designed, I wanted it to be designed to match my company. Uh, I don't babysit my guys because I don't have to. I have the right guys driving my trucks, right? And if you have the right guys, you don't have to babysit. I don't. I don't necessarily care about fuel economy. Today's business plan that sounds idiotic, but you're gonna. My my view on that is you're either going to get it on one end or the other. And what I mean by that is you're going to have driver turnover uh, if you're really going to do the, I need to get seven miles to a gallon, eight miles to a gallon, whatever, the, whatever that magic number is. Uh, 
What, how I view it is, I'm going to have a truck that I want guys to drive that I'm proud of, but also that the driver's proud of and that he's going to take care of. And, and by doing that, that's why we do a lot. Uh, everything we own is Peterbilt or Kenworth. Uh, it's mostly hoods. I do have some aerodynamic trucks for some of the guys that like that. Uh, but the niche for me is to find the truck that fits the driver. And then he's going to also be a long-term driver. And uh, with the new regulations, most of my guys, they're a little nervous about that. You know, we're not cowboys. We do it as legal as we possibly can. There are situations, you're an hour from home, I get it. You're going to sleep better at home, right? And, and um, they, they do what they can. There's always delays at shippers, which concerns the drivers because that's out of our control. Uh, the mileage, we run, we run the Midwest. We don't go to California. I don't go to Texas or Florida anymore. I pretty much dial them in. We run about 22 states, which makes my regulations easier from a logging standpoint for the drivers. So we will be compliant. My shippers are demanding it, and I understand that, and I respect that. And uh, so we're doing everything we can to phase that in. If you're going to get into the trucking industry today, you have to have a passion. Number one, you have to love being gone. You have to love traveling. You have to love visiting uh, different parts of our great nation. Um, coming in from a school, I, for a young man, military guys are phenomenal. They, they, they know how to take orders. They are professional. Um, and, and they're some of the best, uh, I think, in, in our country. Uh, so we do hire military vets as well uh, because the training is second to none. Also, uh, if you're coming out of a school, you, you, you again, get with the right company. Uh, if you're going to be self, I also will teach a young man to drive at our company. Um, I, obviously, I'm very selective. The training to take, will take about six or eight weeks. I don't just pound guys through. I want to make sure that they fit. Um, when, during my interview process, I always say two things. I want to make sure that the driver fits for me, but I want to make sure that it fits for him. It's got to be a win-win for both of us. If it's only good for him and not good for me or vice versa, then nobody wins. Uh, the schools, I think, are good. Uh, but I think drivers are also shocked when they come out of those schools to find out it is a little bit different. Chicken trucking, big wheels there are humming, high balling, skins are crawling, six days without my darling high